Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another recent reads on Sunday in a video in which I discuss some of the books I read recently. And the first book I want to talk to you about is not only a recent read, but also a recent release. And I talked about this book in my uh, September TBR video, and that is a non-fiction uh, book, Sarah Weinman's uh, The Real Lolita. Uh, Sarah Weinman is an American author uh, and journalist, and she writes almost exclusively um, about crime, true crime. Um, this book... Uh, follows the story of Sally Horner, a young girl, 11 year old, who was abducted in 1948 by a man posing as an FBI agent. Uh, he took her uh, f through the United States for two years, he, he raped her, and to the outside world he posed as her father. Uh, after two years, uh, Sally was finally able to escape, and uh, the man was caught and uh, tried and convicted. Uh, the, the question Sarah Weinman poses is how much of this story found its way into uh, Nabokov's famous or infamous novel Lolita, which was published in 1958, and you, I probably don't have to tell you, you know that Lolita is about a man, Humbert Humbert, who takes a young girl, uh, Dolores, uh, whom he calls Lolita, travels with her through the United States, rapes her, um, uh, and she can escape in the end as well. Um, the book, Sarah Weinman's book, so is, is, has two parts. Uh, they are intertwined, so not one after the other, but they are intertwined. And the first part is the story of Sally Horner. Uh, we learn a lot about her background, her family, how she got abducted, what happened to her while she was abducted. Uh, we learn something about the man, Frank Lazal, who took her, um, and about the trial. Um, um, and that is very well researched, you know, court documents. But Sarah Weinman also spoke to people who are still alive, uh, involved in, in the case. Unfortunately, she couldn't talk to Sally Horner because Sally Horner died in a car accident only two years after she was freed. So that's one part. The other part looks at uh, Nabokov and his writing and his life in, in the 40s and 50s and the background of Lolita. Um, so it's it's interesting to, to you know, if, if you are interested in true crime, this is a good book for you, but also if you're interested in how Lolita was made and learn something more about Nabokov, this is also very interesting. The only weak part I found uh, in the book um, was one of the questions that Sarah Weinman wanted to answer is how much did Nabokov know about the Sally Horner case when he wrote Lolita? And that question, she couldn't, uh, Sarah Wyman couldn't really answer that question fully. So that, that's a bit of a, of a letdown, I think. But still, uh, the book was really interesting. It, like I said, it was well-researched. It tells you an, a, a harrowing story of a young girl uh, who had to live with her rapist for two years, but also how this story found its way into literature. So if you're into true crime uh, or if you're interested to learn more about the background of Lolita, I can certainly recommend this book. The second book I read is as famous as Lolita or almost as famous as Lolita, a modern classic, and that is Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, published in 1938. Now, Daphne du Maurier does need an introduction. Uh, Rebecca was her fifth novel, um, and I read this uh, as part of a project, and the Daphne du Maurier project. I will leave a link to the Goodreads group down below. The project was started by Ange over at Beyond the Pages. I will leave a link to her channel down below. She is a lovely uh, Australian booktuber who reads a lot of classics, so if you're interested in that, you should certainly check out her channel. Uh, Daphne du Maurier is one of her favorite writers, and she decided to read all her fiction work in chronological order. That's the Daphne du Maurier project. And in October, we read Rebecca. Now, it was a reread for me. Um, I read Rebecca when I was uh, quite young, so that's quite some time ago. Um, and I didn't know how I would feel about it uh, on the reread. For those of you who don't know, uh, Rebecca tells the story of an unnamed young girl. Throughout the novel, we never um, get to know her first name. We only 
uh, ever get to know that it is an unusual name. Um, she is about 20 years old, 1920, and she is um, uh, uh, on in in this in France. She meets uh, a, a widower uh, twice her age, uh, Maxime de Winter, and they marry. And uh, um, Max takes her back to his home, Manderley, um, and then there the young Mrs. De Winter uh, learns about. Max's past, especially about what happened to Max's first wife, Rebecca. So it's a, a kind of a suspense a crime a novel uh, where the the, the plays Manderley plays a very important role. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, it was a reread for me, so I didn't know how I would feel. But I, I loved it. I, I really loved the reread, and what I especially uh, found very interesting for me is that I knew the story very well. I knew the twist, um, many twists about what happened to Rebecca. So it was not um, that you read the book because you want to find out what happened. And still, the book kept me really on the edge of my seat, which just tells you that it's a really good book. The atmosphere is bleak and dark and the writing is engaging. Uh, it's suspenseful. The story is really interesting. The twists are really interesting. So if you've never read it, I can highly recommend Rebecca. And even if you've read it, I would urge you to reread it. The next book I read was also for a book club, one that I've mentioned uh, a thousand times, that's Read Around the World, um, run by Mel over at Bookland's Adventure. I'm not going to bore you with the details, I just leave the links to the Goodreads group and Mel's channel down below. And the book we read in October uh, was Purge by Sophie Oxan. And this is the, the German edition uh, Fegefeuer, um, which means purge in English. The English um, um, version was published in 2010 and the original uh, Finnish uh, book in 2008. Sophie Oxanen is a Finnish author uh, with an Estonian mother and the book uh, Purge is set in Estonia. Um, it's the story of an old woman, Alid, um, uh, who lives uh, in, in a house, in a farm on the countryside, very... Uh, away from everything. <laughs> and one day she finds a young woman uh, in her backyard, um, uh, Sara, and it turns out that Sara ran away. Uh, she's from Russia and she ran away uh, from her um, uh, sex trafficking uh, pimp. Um, so the book is about these two women mainly. Uh, we learn in back flashes um, about uh, Sarah's past, how she became um, uh, a sex worker against her will. But we also learn about Alid, uh, what happened uh, during the war, the, war the, the Second World War, about her sister. Um, and there is a connection between Sarah and Alid, which will be uncovered in the course of the book. Um, now, uh, it's hard for me to recommend this book. Um, because it is so bleak uh, and so harrowing. Uh, it's not my first Sophie Oxanen, so I knew sort of what I had to expect when I uh, uh, started reading the book, uh, because Sophie Oxanen doesn't sugarcoat. So what we learn about Sarah's uh, um, journey if you want to call it that, um, how she uh, was, you know, raped and uh, forced into uh, prostitution, but also what we learn about uh, Elite's past in the war, uh, that is not easy to read. I can assure you. It's a very good story. It's told really well, but it's not an easy read. Uh, so for those of you who don't uh, mind uh, plunging into a book that is really heart-wrenching and will tell you right into the face what happened without any, um, you know, romanticizing or sugarcoating, then I can certainly recommend it. Uh, but uh, beware that it is a difficult read. And the fourth and last book I want to talk to you about was uh, a reread for me also, like Rebecca, and that is Wild Swans by Yung Chang, published in 1991. 
Yong Zhang is um, a Chinese-born author who um, uh, started, she was born in 1952, and um, she now lives in London. Uh, she immigrated to London or to the UK um, uh, in the late 1970s. This is also a non-fiction book for those of you who don't know, although it was a best-selling uh, book, selling over 30 million copies or something in, in I don't know how many languages. Um, and it tells uh, the story, like the subtitle sa title says, Three Daughters of China. So it starts uh, with Chang's uh, grandmother, uh, who was born in 1909. And the book opens when her grandmother, at the age of 15, so 1924, uh, became the concubine of a Chinese warlord. Um, then we follow the story of the grandmother uh, as a concubine of this warlord. After the warlord dies, she marries uh, a doctor. Um, she has a daughter. Uh, we follow the life of that woman, Chang's mother, uh, who joins the communist movement, uh, marries, um, and then um, gets purged uh, and ha faces her own troubles during the Cultural Revolution. Uh, then in the 1950s, uh, when Yuan Chang was born, her childhood um, in the new China, in the co in communist China, uh, until her immigration to 1970 in 78 to London. Uh, so it's a sweeping family story. Um, I didn't really. I knew that I read the book in German uh, when I, I. I don't know. Maybe more than two decades ago. And I knew what it was about, but I couldn't really remember the read as such. So I was eager to reread it. And this time I chose the English translation, uh, the, the English original, because the book was written by Yong Chang in English. And I, it was fascinating. Um, it's um, if you're interested at all in the history uh, of China, the development of China from the early 20th century to the late 1970s, uh, then you should certainly read this book if you haven't read it uh, already. Um, the, the story focuses on the life of women, especially, because it tells the story, of course, of Chang's grandmother, mother, and herself. But like I said, it's more than just quote unquote, this personal story. It really gives you um, um, information without info dumping about uh, China, about the, um, the, the political situation in China, but also about uh, just normal life in China in, during uh, the 20th, early 20th century until 1978. So I, I really liked uh, uh, this book. I thought it was interesting, well written, engaging, and like with nonfiction, you expect you learn a lot. So this was it for this Sunday Recent Reads. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, whether you re read any of the books that I mentioned or talk to me about any other books. Uh, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.